Hello, my name is Brian Casey, Editor-in-Chief of AntMini.com. We're here at the 2019 edition of the RSNA meeting in Chicago. We have with us right now Sandy Kofta. She is Vice President of Client Services at uh, billing and coding firm Healthcare Administrative Partners. Sandy, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Brian. Sure. So your firm handles a lot of uh, regulatory billing and coding issues for radiologists, radiology managers. Sounds like in 2020, there's really a lot of changes that are on tap. What are some of the bigger things to look out for? Um, definitely the one that our clients are very concerned about is clinical decision support. Uh, while there's no penalties uh, financially yet in 2020, it's a year to get prepared, a year to identify those referring physicians who are not following the procedure. And this, this is a Medicare rule that will require referring physicians to order advanced imaging studies using some kind of clinical decision support. Yes. Um, and one of the things that is concerning a lot of our doctors is that there's a misconception that emergency room services are exempt. Um, it exempts emergent care, uh, meaning Im risk of life or limb, but not necessarily just because you walked in through the emergency room. So there's a lot of concern about that. So I, I guess there's a grace period for about a year before things really kick mm -hmm. in. So what's gonna be happening in that time period? Um, during that time period, Medicare will be providing informational feedback. They will continue to pay claims as always, um, but there will be a message code attached to the claim letting you know that clinical decision support procedures were not followed um, and that come January 1st, 2021, this claim would have resulted in a denial. Mm. Now, the, the clinical decision support is something that the referring physicians need to need to use, correct? That's correct. And. So the, the radiologist, you, you can't exactly like go to every one of your <laughs> referring physicians and make sure they have the software installed mm -hmm. or whatever's going to be done. So w what should they be doing right now to make sure that their referring physicians are using this? Um, the most important thing we're encourage encouraging is rather than reaching out to individual referring physicians at this point is to reach out to hospital systems and, and health systems to say, hey, what are you doing to get your employed practices in line? What system are you going to be using? What training have you provided to your referring physician? Uh, we focus on hospital-based radiology. Um, so we work on that relationship with the hospital and making sure that radiology is in the room for meetings about how clinical decision support is going to be set up and tracked and make sure that that information can come through their billing interface and, and go out on claims. Okay, great. Now, besides clinical decision support, there are some other regulatory changes next year that radiology practices should look out for. What are some of the, the big ones? I mean, there's there's the standard uh, new CPT codes, uh, new ICD-10 updates, which uh, ICD-10, as always, is pushing for more and more specificity. Mm -hmm. uh, Medicare and the OIG are coming out more and more cautioning folks about using working diagnoses, making sure that doctors are giving us enough signs and symptoms to support medical necessity. That's going to be a big deal. Yeah. Um, with your ICD-10, as always, your laterality, your timing, acute versus chronic, every detail we can get about the patient's condition is helpful to help so we can code that diagnosis and get it paid. Great. Any, any other coding issues that you see radiology practices uh, maybe mistakes that they make, things that they can correct to make sure that they do get paid on time? Um, I definitely push standardized reporting, uh, mm -hmm. using templates to make sure that you're capturing, for example, all the elements of a complete abdominal ultrasound. Um, there are eight, they should all be in your templates, so you can make sure to mention them. Um, with uh, ultrasound, vascular ultrasounds and Dopplers, uh, making sure you're give, documenting signs and symptoms because most of those studies do turn out to be negative. Mm -hmm. um, generally speaking, the, um, and dictating uh, CT angiography, always including 3D reconstructions, those are probably the three biggest errors we see in radiology consistently. Okay, great. Well, all things to look out for. Sandy, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Brian. Signing off for AntMini.com, my name is Brian Casey.